Hi there, my name is Josh, and today we're going to be chatting about getting up and running with Calico Enterprise on EKS. So your speaker today is myself, Joshua Allard. I'm a technical consultant at Tigera. Previously, I worked at IBM in the public sector division within GTS. And there I had the titles of senior infrastructure specialist, network architect, and finally solutions architect. Uh, additionally, in my spare time, and I've been doing this for probably <laughs> over a decade, I like to contribute to free software projects such as Tomato, Source Mod, MetaMod, and then minor patches to FreeRDP, TV Headend, etc. Let's see if we have a question. What Kate's role is created when Calico is added to the cluster? What policies? How does Calico Manager authenticate to the Kate's API server? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple different roles that are created. Uh, one of the roles is uh, Tigera-Network Admin. And what that role does is basically for your network team to be able to access uh, the Tigera or Calico Enterprise Manager. And then from there, uh, you can use role-based access control to limit uh, which tiers they can see. And I can show you guys that a bit later on in this webinar here. Uh, Ed, was that your question? Or... Raised hand. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so what is Project Calico? Well, Project Calico maintains Calico, which is an open source networking and network security solution for containers, virtual machines, and host-based networks. So previously, we supported a lot of different um, orchestration platforms, even outside of Kubernetes. But currently, we support OpenStack, as well as the majority of your Kubernetes distributions out there. So uh, what we basically do is we uh, have this component called Felix. And what Felix does is it sits on every single Kubernetes worker node and a control node that you have. And what it does there is it programs uh, the firewall with uh, NetFilter slash IP tables. Additionally, we support NF tables and we actually have a new data plane that uses eBPF. Uh, the reason why Calico has done so well in terms of performance is we use native Linux constructs to program not only the interfaces that are running, but is the firewall as well. So depending on your Linux kernel version, Calico uh, can get faster with time as the community progresses with the Linux kernel networking stack. Additionally, a lot of enterprises use this on premise for BGP capabilities where you can use native networking throughout your entire cluster and then set up BGP peering with your top of rack switch. In the case of EKS, this talk here, a lot of people use us with VXLAN, which is a very self-contained environment that basically just works. Uh, who uses Project Ca or who uses Calico Enterprise? Uh, you can see some of the customers that we have below. Uh, we co-led the Istio Security Working Group, and we uh, actively maintain Calico in the Kubernetes repository that is downstream from Project Calico itself. So with EKS, you have a couple different networking options that are available to you. So I. Uh, a recent development from Amazon is to allow you to not only use different CNIs as the orchestration platform behind it to facilitate networking, but additionally, you can use this just for policy if you'd like to use a different CNI uh, beneath it. So EKS used to ship with uh, AWS CNI, or we I call it internally Amazon VPC, but additionally, what they've recently announced is you're actually able to change out the CNI that's in there underneath, which is removing that AWS node component and selling Calico instead. So what that means is now with EKS, you're using Calico not only for networking, but for security policy as well. 
So there's a couple differences between using the AWS VPC CNI versus the Calico CNI. Uh, with the AWS VPC CNI, there's no encapsulation. The policy engine's still Calico, but you're using VPC routing that's native to Amazon itself. So if you were, for instance, looking to expand your Kubernetes worker nodes between multiple different cloud platforms, if you're tied to just using VPC constructs, that's AWS centric. So in terms of scaling your cluster to multiple clouds, you're going to run into some headaches and difficulty there. Uh, with Calico CNI, we offer no encapsulation as well, which is the same as AWS uh, CNI, but additionally, we offer VXLAN and IP and IP encapsulation. Additionally, for the control plane, if you're using no encap or with IP and IP, you can use BGP peering, which uh, allows you to extend your Kubernetes cluster networking native addressing to the rest of your environment if you're able to BGP peer with another piece of equipment within your ecosystem. Additionally, we do support VXLAN, which is relevant for Windows if you are looking to use Windows worker nodes in your environment. Um, IP and IP is currently not supported on Windows, so your only uh, avenue there is to use an, uh, no encapsulation or native networking or VXLAN. So with the AWS CNI, you have native VPC networking with the CNI plugin. All the pods have the same VPC addresses that are assigned to that host itself. It's simple and secure. It's open source and it's on GitHub. And the link, if you'd like to take a look at the actual code for Amazon VPC CNI is below. So currently we have two instances here with two interfaces. So we're, we have an Nginx pod, a Java pod across these two different nodes. So we can see at the top here that there's a call from the CNI to call EC2 associate address. So on that ENI interface that's assigned to these two different instances or worker nodes, we can see that we have 10.0.0.1 and 10.0.0.2 on the first node. And on the second node, we have 10.0.0.20 and 10.0.0.22 on the second node. So with AWS CNI, one of those interfaces, sorry, one of those IP addresses from this ENI interface over here is assigned to that Nginx pod. And the same thing with this Java pod underneath. So it's using native addressing that Amazon gives you in the environment. So where that, sorry, so with, I'll just jump back here really quick. So where this becomes problematic is you're now limited to the addresses that Amazon gives you. And it's not only Amazon with other cloud providers as well there is a limit to the number of secondary IPs you can have on each interface. Uh, it, with uh, Microsoft Azure, as an example, um, you're only limited to eight addresses. And it, additionally, it also depends on your machine type as well. So if you have a smaller machine type, they'll actually limit the number of addresses that you're allowed to have associated with that specific uh, EC2 instance or worker node that you have. So where that becomes problematic is if you're looking to run a multitude of pods because your containers that are running within those pods are quite small. So let's say you have 100 containers or 100 pods on a single node, which is potentially quite common depending on the node size itself. What happens there is you're not at the mercy of the addresses that Amazon has available to you as well as being able to actually run that quantity or number of pods on those nodes, because eventually you'll run out of address space. So we're not address space, but just addresses that are assigned to those nodes and your pods won't be able to spin up because the CNI that's currently in place is unable to grab that address from Amazon. So where Calico comes into play is we support policy uh, enforcement on top of other CNIs that are cloud native, or if you're looking to use Flannel, or we actually have another um, kind of combination product between the two called Canal, and that's the default with uh, 
Rancher as an example, which is a merger between Flannel and Calico, which we maintain as well. So what Tigera does is we offer commercial support for not only Project Calico, the open source component, but we have a commercial product called Calico Enterprise as well. And I'll show you guys that in a bit. So currently with Amazon VPC CNI, we can see pod A has the address of 192.168.1.59. It flows on this virtual interface, ENI1234, and it goes directly out on ETH0. And we can see that the same address that's present here for the pod itself is also on this physical interface over here. And then we can also see that we're within the same VPC subnet so it just natively routes up and goes to pod C, which is also on ETH0 on node 2, and also has a physical address on ETH0. So what we can see here is pod B with an address 192.168.1.18 is crossing the slash 24 boundary and talking to a different VPC subnet, which we're calling node 3, and that's on 192.168. 2.69. So what we can see here is Amazon uh, natively will route our traffic and this traffic is natively visible for constructs within Amazon itself. So if you're looking to use CloudWatch as an example, everything will be logged and visible through CloudWatch. So powering your EKS cluster with Calico. So we have a tool called Calico Cuddle. It's basically just a management tool for the open source version of Calico itself. For Calico Enterprise, we actually have an API server. So all the tasks you would normally do with Calico Cuddle, you can actually do with Cube Cuddle. As we've talked about before, you have various networking options. You can use an encapsulation layer to hide those pod addresses from the native network underneath itself, or you can turn off encapsulation entirely just use native addressing itself. Additionally, with peering options, Calico by default sets up full mesh BGP. Uh, you can additionally set up uh, route reflectors to help insulate from uh, just bird or uh, routing updates from happening within your entire cluster. And you can set up different pops or uh, points of presence, if you will, to facilitate that networking for you. Additionally, we have network policy enforcement at the global and namespace level. We have egress, ingress and egress policy. We integrate with Istio for layer seven policy, uh, et cetera. Additionally, we have two different cube pro proxy modes. We have IPVS and IP tables. Additionally, if you're using eBPF, we actually have a cube pro proxy replacement that removes that pod entirely within your environment. So if you've ever had issues with Cube Proxy, we have something called DSR or a direct server return. And that bypasses Cube Proxy entirely and acts as a port forwarding mechanism that Cube Proxy traditionally handled within your environment. Additionally, as we were talking about before, we have a couple different data plane options. So we support IP tables, NF tables, uh, eBPF, which is new. And we also support Windows Host Networking Service or HNS. Uh, additionally, if you're looking to mix Windows and Linux worker nodes within the same cluster, you're more than able to do so with Calico uh, Enterprise itself. So with Calico CNI, we can see here that within the same VPC, we're just using native addressing itself. So on ETH0, we can see that we have an address of 192.168.1.42. Then over here, we can see that the pod uh, with pod A has 10001. And the reason this works is we've disabled source desk check uh, within the VPC itself. So 10001 can route natively to 10.01.1. And the reason why this works is Bird or Felix, sorry, in this case, we're using native networking, so Bird is running underneath and it's setting up the BGP peering relationship between these two nodes themselves. So where this gets a bit tricky is when we cross that VPC subnet and we go into a different subnet. So we can see here that the traffic from 10.001 
is now going through our VXLAN slash IP and IP encapsulation uh, tunnel. And that traffic is actually tunneled from ETH0 across that VPC subnet to node number three, and it's talking to 1002.1. But that tunnel destination is set up dynamically. You don't have to set up manually between 192.168.1.42 to 192.168.2.214. So traffic um, within the same VPC subnet is not encapsulated in this example. And the encapsulation layer is only utilized and put into effect when it's crossing that VPC subnet. And Calico does this for you intelligently behind the scenes. There's three different modes. You can set up a cross subnet, which will turn on encapsulation if it's crossing that subnet boundary, which Calico can see and set up. Or additionally, you can set up always. So the traffic from node one going to node two will always be encapsulated if you set it to always encapsulate. Um, in the majority of circumstances, you want cross subnet as opposed to always, but there are certain use cases underneath such as avoiding traffic shaping and similar, if that's a situation in your environment between those two nodes. So some Calico CNI advantages and some disadvantages is you have efficient IP address allocation, which means you're no longer at the risk of running out of VPC addresses themselves on those nodes. And the networking that you've provisioned within your cluster is fully agnostic of the underlying fabric that you have, which also allows you to have an abstracted way of configuring networking between multiple clouds and within your environment itself. So you're no longer tied to a single cloud provider or even the cloud itself. You could set up a peering relationship between uh, the worker nodes that are in uh, AWS and Amazon sorry, and Azure, as well as your on-premise environment. And you could do that from using IP and IP encapsulation with BHP peering, as well as turning on WireGuard, which is a new feature in Calico 3.15 to encrypt all of that traffic between those different nodes. And what what we were talking about before is you also have extended capabilities such as source IP preservation as well as direct server return. Uh, one of the disadvantages that you will lose from not using native uh, Amazon networking is you no longer have native VPC IP addressing, which means the instances underneath those pods will no longer truly be visible to Amazon's native tools because they're tunneled. So that's something to take into consideration if you're using Calico open source. With Calico Enterprise, you have flow logs, which are uh, pumped into Elasticsearch, and there you can use queries, which replaces that CloudWatch scenario where you're losing that visibility. So the EKS CNI uh, installation flowchart on the left, you deploy an EKS cluster with default settings. And then you just deploy Calico for policy on top, and then you can deploy your application and you're good to go. With Calico CNI, there's a little more involved. You deploy an EKS cluster without any node groups whatsoever. And the reason why you're doing this is AWS node is not scheduled, so it cannot configure and set up the CNI for the cluster yet. So that's why we removed the daemon set as step two then after that, you deploy your CNI, which is Calico, uh, either open source with a manifest-based install or enterprise with an operator-based install. And then you uh, can configure encapsulation or other settings within your Calico environment that are applicable to your environment, such as Prometheus or a Cabana or just even uh, the compliance and alerting elements that we have as part of the product. And then from there, you add or scale your node group, or in this case, even provision a node group to start with. And what that will do is install the CNI within your cluster. So the CNI is not installed until you add or scale your instance group or node group 
that you have running. And then finally, you, dis you if you're using native addressing with no encapsulation, you disable source destination checking to get that cross subnet uh, function or functionality with encapsulation or within the same VPC, no encapsulation whatsoever. Then finally, deploy your application here at the bottom. So if you're looking to deploy uh, Calico on EKS, you can go to tiger.io slash partner slash AWS and take a look at some eBooks that we have as well as case studies, as well as just even blog posts and interviews with uh, some customers that actively use this. So, so let me give you guys a quick demo here really quick. So go to kubectl, get pod, stash A. So currently this cluster is using Calico for policy with Calico Enterprise. So we can see here that we're using AWS CNI. We have the AWS nodes provisioned. Uh, we have a couple different pods, uh, one for Elasticsearch. Uh, we have a couple manager pods. We have Kibana. Uh, we have our Tiger API server. And what that allows you to do is something like kubectl get IP pools p oyaml So in this case, that's empty because we are using AWS CNI, so there's no IP pool that's actually provisioned with Calico. And the reason why that is, is Calico is not provisioning IPs, AWS CNI is, it's these AWS nodes here that are running that provision your environment. So if we do a kubectl get uh, gnp.p-oyaml, this is a test cluster I just spun up. So there might not be actually anything in here. Global. Yeah, so that is empty, but if we do a kubectl get network policy. Sorry, yeah, I haven't actually configured any policies in this cluster, but it was a bad example. So kubectl get tigera status. So this is just a quick health check that's in your environment. So if you're running Calico, and Calico open source 315 or later, you can actually do a kubectl get Tiger status, and we will actually report on Calico itself. So if you're upgrading from a manifest based installation to the operator that shipped in 315, as part of that, we have you go into kubectl get Tiger status and just watch this deployment. So what that looks like is if you do a kubectl get deployments, there will actually be two different deployments for Typha as well as kube controllers while the cluster's rolling over or upgrading from that manifest based install to the operator. So one consideration that you wanna take into account there is Typha uses host networking. And what that means is because it's not using pod networking, there might be port conflicts on that migration. So if you are moving from Calico Manifest to Calico Operator, or even just upgrading your cluster, you might want to double uh, your node count temporarily just to support those additional Calico Typha instances while the deployment and daemon set that's present uh, is rolling over your cluster to the new version or uh, using a rolling update in your environment. It's just an alias for a couple of tokens that I wrote. So if we do the login. So this is the Calico Enterprise web interface and I'm about to show you guys here. So we expanded here on the left, let's go down to policies. I just have the default 
setup that you get from a Calico Enterprise installation. So by default, we have a policy that is created for each component that we have. Then underneath on the right hand side here, uh, we have Kubernetes default deny policies as well. So on the left, allow tag error is something called a tier uh, where you can specify an order for policies that should be applied. So for the allow tag error tier, we can add another tier called uh, demo as an example. So on Tigera and demo, let's just save that tier. So let's, before I do that, um, I'll show you guys flow visualization really quick. So uh, just clicking on this little uh, price tag looking icon up here in the top right hand corner, it's the tag icon. And what that does is it just annotates the namespaces that are on the outer ring here. So if we mouse over a cube system, we can see on the right hand side, it says cube system underneath this drop down space right here. So if we're jumping into, let's say, yeah, let's take a look at cube system itself. So we can see that Tiger Fluent D is talking to cube system as well as um, Tiger ECK operator, the elastic operator. We can see that the elastic operator is talking to core DNS. Additionally, with Tiger Fluent D, it's like you're talking to Core DNS as well, which it is. And we can see uh, the pod name there on the right hand side. So we can change it to names, and that just changes the color. But additionally, if you're looking at the status, green means permitted. And then if there was a bunch of red in here, that would mean denied. So since we're in the cube system namespace, we can just zoom in by clicking the magnifying glass. Then we can see everything that's talking to cube system. So we can see we have the Tiger CK operator, Tiger Fluent D, Tiger Prometheus, as well as Calico system. So let's go back to policies here. So with Calico Enterprise, we have this feature called recommend policy. And this to me is so powerful. I recommend this for all of our clients. So I will go back here for 24 hours. And what this does is it queries that Elasticsearch database that has all of your flow logs in it from FluentD. And it just evaluates what has been stored in Elasticsearch. So we were looking at Cube system before. And then right here, we have this unprotected only checkbox. If we uncheck that, if there's other pods within this namespace that do not have policy applied, they will show up in this drop down menu. But for the most part, I only use this feature for pods that we have not uh, configured any policy for. And the reason why that is, is Elasticsearch will only recommend policy for flows that it sees. So if you're dropping traffic, as an example, it won't be able to uh, recommend policy for that workload because the traffic's being dropped and it's not being allowed beforehand. So you're not getting a complete set for that pod itself. So if we click recommend here, we can see that uh, there's a label that's been suggested, which is EKS Amazon AWS.com slash component equals core DNS. So that's what this policy is applying to, as well as uh, matching the label Cades app equals cube DNS. So when you're creating your pods in your environment, I highly recommend to create more labels than you think you need. And the reason why that is, is based on this feature with policy recommendation, it can match those consistent labels between different workloads to help simplify your environment and just your overall management of policy itself. So if we scroll down here, we can see that it has recommended 14 different ingress policy rules for cube DNS itself. So we can see that it's matching the labels of Gates app equals elastic operator, as well as control plane equals elastic operator, as well as the namespace itself. And the reason why it's able to do this is this is just all the information that is stored in Elasticsearch. So this is just an Elasticsearch query to get all of these different ingress policy rules that are applicable to this environment. Then down here, finally, we can see that protocol is UDP. It can talk to port 53. And the reason why that is, 
is that is DNS traffic coming in from outside of Kubernetes that's just going to the environment itself. So in this case, we actually don't want this generic rule in here uh, necessarily. So let's remove it. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's do another example here. Let's just remove a whole bunch of these rules. Let's go to Fluent D2. So if we were to enforce this policy right now, it's a good chance that, that we would cause a lot of damage within our Kubernetes cluster. So one thing that Calico Enterprise allows you to do is you can preview what that policy will do to your cluster. So let's change it to status. Yeah, so uh, over here, we can see that changes are applied and we're only looking at changed flows. So the only thing that we're viewing right now is what is changed within our cluster. And before I'm sure everyone on uh, this webinar remembers, the traffic itself was all permitted. So now we can see that we have now denied traffic from the Tiger CK Elastic Operator to Core DNS, as well as the Curator pods that we have, Fluent D, as well as Calico Manager. So we can immediately see what these changes would do within our Kubernetes cluster. And then we can go back and back out this policy. Additionally, if we were just testing this policy itself, we can stage it. And what that does is it stores uh, that line item in your policy set. So if you're working on multiple policies at a time, you can stage them all and then force them all in one go. Additionally, if you're more familiar with the YAML side of things, you can just click this little download icon right here, open it up, and then apply this against your GitOps workflow. So if you're storing your Kubernetes uh, network policy or Calico network policy in Git, you can do a commit from there and then um, commit it to your repository and then roll it out that way using something like Argo CD or another orchestration platform within your environment. Uh, additionally, with uh, Calico Enterprise, we have this timeline feature here. So it actually stores um, different changes that have been made to your Kubernetes environment itself in relation to Calico. So we can see that we created this tier demo and the username or service account that I'm currently using is called Jane. So if we go into here, we can see exactly what was actually changed within the environment. So we provisioned a kind of tier with an API version of projectcalico.org slash v3 with a name of demo with an order of 200. So what of that, we can also visualize the nodes that are present as well as uh, the different network sets we have in here as well. And what network set is, is just basically an IP set that's propagated throughout your entire environment. So we have a couple different sessions coming up here. On August 25th, we have self-service network security for Kubernetes. On August 26th, we have how to secure and troubleshoot your microservices network on Amazon EKS. On August 27th, in the European time zone, we have getting up and running with Calico on AKS. As well as on August 27th, we have visibility and troubleshooting modern applications with Calico Enterprise and OpenShift. And on September 1st, we have Calico network policy on OpenShift. And just like how you signed up for this event here, everything is available on tigero.io slash events. Additionally, with Calico Enterprise, like we talked about today, if you would like to take a look at a trial for Calico Enterprise, you can just go to tigera.io slash trial. Today, we looked at policy auto creation, as well as uh, policy preview and staging, as well as policy troubleshooting tools as well, which is a flow visualization tool. Uh, does anyone have any questions about anything we've talked about uh, today?